Hello, this is Cybernet with me, Steve Truitt. Coming up, we fly into combat, meet up with a voodoo doll, go vampire hunting with Buffy, and return to a fantastical adventure. It's ahead of the pack, it's Cybernet. Welcome to the show. The wait for our first game to finally transition to the PC has been excruciating, so we won't prolong your agony any further. That's right, the most popular first-person shooter on the Xbox, Halo Combat Evolved, is back in a new home. You play as Master Chief, the ultimate soldier, who has the daunting task of saving the world. To do this, you must progress through a sci-fi adventure dispatching everything that gets in your way. The story here is exactly the same as the Xbox version, which has sold over three million copies worldwide. Just as in the Xbox version, the story mode is riveting while the missions are filled with awesome action, chilling sound effects, and a haunting musical score. And let's not forget that now famous plot twist known simply as the Flood. The graphics under the enhanced power of the PC look even better and the controls are perfectly suited to the keyboard and mouse configuration. But let's face it, the reason why Halo is a legend on the Xbox is the cool multiplayer maps which allow you to take on your friends via split screen or system link. In fact, its only drawback is the lack of online play. Fortunately, this has been rectified. Now you can play against up to 15 of your virtual pals online. The developers at Bungie also added some new maps to explore and some new weapons. Ever thought you'd get to see Master Chief with a flamethrower? But if you're fond of the old maps, several have been updated with improved vehicles. Yep, the Warthog now comes equipped with a rocket launcher, and the one thing we've all wanted to see has been included, the Banshee. Finally, multiplayer aerial combat is here. We couldn't recommend Halo Combat Evolved for the PC more. If these updates are just a sampling of what we can expect in Halo 2, gaming will never be the same again. Behold the future of Tron 2.0 on the PC. This computer world is the stuff of dreams for us at Cybernet. But one could get lost in this land of bits and bytes, so let us be your guide. Grab a pen and jot down this cheat. First, press T and type M, P, M, A, P, H, O, L, and E. Navigating has just been made a whole lot easier because you've just unlocked every level of this game. That's right, now you can jump from level to level faster than any Pentium processor around. Now that's the kind of cheat we like. Enjoy. If you think you have it bad, try being a voodoo doll. Just think about it. Not only do people use you to put curses on people, they poke you with sharp needles. What's a poor doll to do? Fight back! Meet Vince. He's here to make big trouble for the bad guys in his new platform title, Voodoo Vince, on the Xbox. Cosmo the Inscrutable has kidnapped Madame Charmaine. Inadvertently, they spilled some of Charmaine's zombie dust on her beloved Voodoo doll, and thus Voodoo Vince was born. Thanks to a psychic bond the two share, Charmaine leads Vince from one crazy level to another with some of the most bizarre looking villains we've ever seen. Vince uses many traditional movements of a typical platform hero. He's able to jump on enemies and even bop them with a vicious headbutt. However, there are several other combos that prove he's anything but cute, especially when trapped in a tight corner. What truly sets our hero apart, though, is his ability to execute devastating spells with the help of a little black magic. Bye now. Player 
players will take the raggedy little hero through 30 puzzle-laden levels. Unfortunately, the game is bogged down by inconsistency. The various objectives are simply not that challenging. It's also hard to tell what age group this game is targeting. And although it's simplistic, it seems a little too violent and dark to be geared for younger gamers. The Xbox has struggled to find a platform superstar, managing only the previous subpar effort Blinks the Time Sweeper. Sadly, Vince doesn't hit the mark either. Besides the look of our hero, there's very little here that's truly unique. Even the level design looks like a thousand other titles. However, the game isn't a total curse. Its strange brand of humor, unusual looking characters, and smooth controls do offer some fun. So despite its problems, if you're looking for a platform hopper to help pass the time, Voodoo Vince might still put a spell on you. <laughs> Ready, set, go! While there are many Formula Racing titles already out there, only one is officially licensed by Formula One Administration Limited. Are you ready to prove your worth behind the wheel? Try to keep up, fellow racers, with F1 Challenge 99-02 for the PC, our Game of the Week. You start off as a rookie driver, which means before you race, you have to earn a super license. But that's only the beginning. You then have to acquire a car, develop your skills, and build a winning reputation over a four-year span. In true EA tradition, the game covers the 1999 to 2002 seasons, which means you'll have every car, driver, track, and team in that period. In case you were wondering, that's 14 teams, 44 different vehicles, 38 drivers, and 17 of the world's most famous racing circuits. Best of all, F1 Challenge gives you the opportunity to create your own profile and compete with world champion drivers like Damon Hill and Michael Schumacher. The graphics are top notch, giving both the cars and the tracks explicit detail. The game's vehicle modeling and force feedback effects even account for what some developers might think are trivial details like bumps in the track. While we found the controls to be ultra smooth, it's important to point out that F1 isn't a simple arcade racer. It's aimed primarily at the hardcore racing enthusiasts who will likely get the most from the game's challenging levels and numerous features. But if you're the kind of driver that's happiest burning rubber, then F1 Challenge 99-02 is an inferno of racing excitement. Might as well invest in a helmet, racing fans, because this game is so intense, it might just blow you off the track. And that's why it's our Game of the Week. Okay, it's time for Cybernet's Top 10 PlayStation 2 Games. At number 10, squealing past the competition, it's the rocket-powered racers of Midnight Club 2 zooming to the finish line. For those who feel they've got rhythm, the block-rocking beats of Amplitude are sure to keep your fingers busy at 9. At 8, you don't need a big PC anymore. Now the magic of EverQuest Online Adventures has taken control of your PS2. Combining action, magic, and plenty of adventure, Dark Chronicle is here to fill all your role-playing needs at 7. Aliens vs. Predators sounds like my idea of an awesome altercation. The battle for supremacy begins with extinction at 6. At 5, the American football season is in full swing, but you can manage the team just the way you like with Madden NFL 2004. Speeding Mini Coopers means only one thing, the Italian job. Yes, the gang is back again to pull off an L.A. heist at 4. At three, this king of golf needs no introduction. He's hit yet another hole-in-one with Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004. And you thought Dance Dance Revolution was embarrassing. Time to let it all hang out with iToy play at two. But battling it out to reach the top of the chart, it's Hayachi and the other fighters from Soul Calibur 2, our PS2 number one.
The first Zone of the Enders title surprised many gamers with its fast-paced action. Two years later, the sequel has arrived. Prepare for Zone of the Enders, the second runner for the PlayStation 2. This title puts you in the middle of a war on the planet Mars, between the Earthlings and Mars inhabitants known as the Enders. This time around, players take on the role of Dingo Egret, who pilots a gigantic humanoid weapon called Jehudi. And you can be sure in a game like this, where there's one gigantic robot, there's bound to be several hundred more. The game's manga influence can be seen in both its cel-shaded graphics and animated FMV. Unfortunately, these cutscenes are rather lengthy and may test the patience of gamers. However, those who don't mind a little plot will find a fairly well-scripted story with some better-than-average voice acting. You don't look like a mining man to me. Get lost. While the look of this game may give you the impression that it's just another mech title, Zone of the Enders 2 is actually a fast-paced adventure that puts more emphasis on action. Fortunately, the controls are smooth, allowing you to execute lightning-quick maneuvers. The combat engine is impressive, allowing players to destroy up to 100 enemies at a time. And when your back is up against the wall, you'll even be able to pick some enemies up and use them as shields. The second runner carries with it a few faults that also plague the first game. For one thing, the camera still gets a bit chaotic. While this may give you a few dizzy spells, it's a small price to pay for the game's fast-paced fun. So if you're one of the many who were blown away by the original Zone of the Enders, we're pleased to report that the second runner raises the bar set by the first game. Looks like this one could be another surprise hit. Driving quickly through crowded streets in the middle of the night is dangerous enough. But in Midnight Club 2 for the PS2, we've got a code that makes it even more perilous. So grab a pen and jot down this hazardous cheat. At the cheat code screen, type in save the kids as one word. That's S-A-V-E-T-H-E-K-I-D and S. Now, tight turns and big jumps are the least of your problems because you've just unlocked guns and rockets. And don't worry if your competition has a faster car than you because we're certain none of them can outrun a bullet. Coming up, slay some vampires, go extreme racing, and sail into adventure. that was never committed. I didn't kill my husband. Pretty girl for a convicted murderer. Hello, sweetie. Daddy! Nick? Now an ancient law means revenge. You track him down, and when you find him, you can kill him. Double Jeopardy, Wednesday at 9, ITV1. For some, becoming a world-class DJ is just a dream. For one of this lot, it's about to become a reality. Eight budding DJs head to head in a battle for supremacy, but only one will be chosen to mash it up on a global tour. The Joy of Dex starts next Thursday at ITV1. Great atmosphere here as it goes to penalties, Rob. Yeah, look at the stars on the benches. Here's Williams. Great penalty. He's done Matt Paul and for fun. Now Beckham. Oh, leave it to David. SMTV Gold, definitely in your league. Saturdays, 2 o'clock, CITV. Welcome back to part two of Cybernet. We begin the second half with a television favorite that recently wrapped production after seven critically acclaimed seasons. 
In that time, Buffy Summers captured the imaginations of a legion of fans. They watched as she fought evil vampires, warlocks, zombies, heck, she even died a couple of times, only to return stronger than ever. We're pleased to report The Chosen One has returned in a major way in Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds for all three consoles. A sequel to the Xbox exclusive original game, Chaos Bleeds takes place during season five of the show. You'll first step into the Slayer's shoes, but pretty soon you'll be able to control the rest of the Scooby gang as well, including Xander, Willow, Spike, fan favorite Faith, and even Sid the Dummy, an obscure guest star from the show's very first season. As a plus, except for Buffy and Willow, most of the show's cast have returned to voice their characters. And look at that. Vampire Zilch, Xander Harris, still alive. It's definitely the game's loyalty to the show that ends up being its strong suit. In fact, the title quickly turns into a who's who collection of Buffy's rogue gallery. The story revolves around the vampire Kikistos, who's been resurrected and has brought a few other baddies with him, including Ethan Rain and The First. Like the first game, the emphasis is on hand-to-hand -hand combat, but in Chaos Bleeds, each character has their own strengths and weaknesses. Willow relies on her magic, while Xander uses brute strength. And though Buffy is the best all-around fighter, miniature Sid has the ability to get to those hard-to-reach places. The combat is not quite as smooth as the original Xbox title, but the ability to choose between several popular characters makes this a must-play for any Buffy fan. There's even a wide menu of multiplayer party games. You'll battle your friends to the end with the King of the Hill-inspired domination, and even take part in Anya's least favorite game, Catch the Bunny. While her show may have disappeared into the darkness, Chaos Bleeds proves that Buffy's still the protector of the night. That's it, I'm out of here. But this ain't over by a long shot, girly girl. Girly girl? Who are you calling girly? What's better than competing in a spirited round of volleyball on a warm, sunny day at the beach? Playing outlaw volleyball from your couch on the Xbox, of course. But just because you're planted firmly in your chair doesn't mean you can't travel to some pretty unique locations. So grab a pen and jot down this cheat. In exhibition mode and while holding the left trigger, quickly press up, down, up, down, left, left, right, and right. Now you can take on all comers from anywhere because you've just unlocked every location in this game. That's right, traveling has been made easy with Cybernet as your guide. So have fun and keep watching for more awesome cheats. The future is now and the need for speed is constantly on the rise. Welcome to the physics-bending world of XGRA Extreme G Racing Association for the Xbox and PS2. XGRA is actually the fourth installment of the Extreme G series, and in this future, everything is fast. Your task is to get behind the wheel of these gravity-defying vehicles and try to win the race. We're to drive and I'm ready! But your driving skills won't be enough to get you to the checkered flag, especially when you take into consideration the numerous weapons available and the grudges some of the other drivers hold against you. In this edition, you no longer earn money for winning, which can be used for upgrading your vehicle. Instead, you earn points by completing specific tasks that allow you to move on to the next race. Plus, your vehicle automatically upgrades, so there's less thinking involved, resulting in more accessibility. Graphically, XGRA leaps ahead of its predecessor with some pretty vivid colors and shapes. And the environments are interactive as well. In some cases, you have to shoot out billboards as you drive. This sort of mini-game within the game adds a new level of intensity. 
Fortunately, the controls are tight and responsive, letting you seamlessly glide in the correct direction. The weapons have also been tweaked, allowing you to carve out a path of destruction. Collecting the power-ups will upgrade your arsenal, but using the correct weapon might make the game a bit too easy. Still, we found XGRA Extreme G Racing Association a blast. The Xbox version is more solid than the PS2's, but in either case, we think you'll be taking this one out for a spin again and again. When it comes to role-playing games, one title reigns supreme, Final Fantasy. And now the world's most popular RPG series is set to return in not one, but two epic adventures. These games are months away from release, but your pals here at CyberNet have some very cool early footage to whet your appetite. Let's first take a look at Final Fantasy X-2 for the PS2, which is actually a sequel to the critically acclaimed 10th edition. It'll take place two years after the events of FF10 and will focus primarily on Yuna, who goes on a quest to find her lost love, Titus. She'll be assisted by Riku and Pain as they journey through the land of Spyra, collecting mystical spheres and battling powerful creatures. Not only will this be the first female-led FF title, it will also be the first mission-based edition, allowing for non-linear gameplay. It will also reintroduce the active time battle system, which will replace the turn-based system used in the last game. We can also expect an enhanced character development system, which will allow the women to adopt different types of jobs, abilities, and even styles of clothing. Whoever thought a Final Fantasy game would be so fashion-minded? If that wasn't enough, the Final Fantasy creators at Square Enix are also hard at work on an entirely different release for the GameCube called Crystal Chronicles. This is an amazing development considering that Square hasn't released a game for a Nintendo console in nearly 10 years. Equally surprising is that this won't be a traditional RPG filled with random encounters. Instead, this will be more of an action adventure with real-time battles requiring four characters to band together as a fighting unit. Crystal Chronicles will be a storybook style game set in a medieval world filled with magic. We have no doubt it will live up to the Final Fantasy legacy, and we promise to give you full reviews of both these titles when they're finally released. Even though it seems like the subject of World War II has been reserved exclusively for only first-person shooters, there's a new title that takes a slightly different perspective. Get ready, RTS fans, for an explosive tactical adventure in Silent Storm for the PC. You'll play as either Axis or Allies. The Allied forces include America, Britain, and Russia, while the Axis has Germany, Japan, and Italy. And when it comes to designing your army, there's a tremendous amount of freedom. You can make use of a custom character option and several soldier classes, including Medic, Scout, Engineer, Grenadier, and Sniper. You'll also be able to select from a menu of over 75 different authentic weapons of the time, including small arms weapons and knives. Once you start the game, it's plain to see that action is emphasized over historical accuracy. The story takes a dirty dozen approach to warfare, which means you can leave all that stealth stuff to the guy from Splinter Cell. But this is not to say Silent Storm is not a thinking player's game. There are enough strategic elements to please any fan of the Command and Conquer series. Like many game board RPGs, each character will be assigned a certain number of points. The more actions you perform, the more points you spend. This means that the accuracy of your attacks depends greatly on your character's percentage of points. So your characters will have to work together to successfully complete a mission. 
While not as intricate or high-tech as Command & Conquer Generals, Silent Storm does offer a smooth gaming experience for the World War II enthusiasts. The graphics are good, the action is fast, and the gameplay is fun. While this may be considered a low-profile title, it certainly was a surprise attack on our expectations. It looks like we've come to the end of another victorious episode of Cybernet. We'll be back soon, though, with even more fantastic games and features from around the world. And don't forget to keep in touch via email. So until next time, here's more outer space action from Homeworld 2, compliments of Cybernet.